Good morning. We have hand sanitizer there to share with all of you too, so feel free. Uh, good morning to my fellow Nevadans. I appreciate you being here for this opportunity. As all of you know, Nevada had our first two presumptive cases of COVID-19 announced this past week. So I wanted to take the opportunity to give Nevadans a status update and what we have done to prepare as we look ahead. We've all seen this situation develop quickly here in Nevada, around the country, and around the globe. When situations develop quickly, it can lead to misinformation. And in misinformation can lead to panic, which doesn't do anybody any good. My goal today is to provide the most accurate, updated, possible information in current uh, COVID-19 situation in Nevada, the preventative measures that the state of Nevada and local health authorities are taking to contain the spread and to keep our citizens healthy and safe. First, a status update on COVID-19 in Nevada. On Wednesday evening, the Southern Nevada Health District determined that an individual based in Clark County is presumptive positive for COVID-19. Presumptive positive means that the individual tested positive for COVID-19 by public health lab, but we must wait for the Federal Centers for Disease Control to confirm that result. That result should be coming soon. The man is currently being cared for in isolation at a local hospital. A second individual, based in Washoe County, also received a presumptive positive test for the virus on Thursday. The individual was recently traveling aboard a cruise ship where he was potentially exposed to the virus. The Washoe County individual is currently in self-isolation at home. On March, March 4th and 5th of last week, the state was notified by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, that 40 Nevadans were passengers on the Grand Princess cruise ship and disembarked from the ship on February 21st. That includes a presumptive case that we have in Washoe County. I'm proud to say that Nevada's local health authorities responded immediately to contact and assess all passengers for signs of illness. And finally, the best news of the week. Last night, Washoe County Health District announced that all COVID-19 testing that was conducted on Friday came back negative, including all students at Huffaker Elementary School who were tested. The negative result includes the family member of the resident who tested presumptive positive for COVID-19 on Thursday. The recent, recent announcement of two presumptive positive cases in the state of Nevada have led to some questions over lab testing in our state, so I'd like to provide some facts. I know a lot of Nevadans have questions on why certain people are getting tested and others are not. I want to assure you that our local health authorities have been responsible stewards in the administration of screenings and risk assessment based on existing CDC guidelines. But I believe we all share the same desire to test even more people as necessary. As of last week, Nevada had two designated public laboratories for COVID-19 testing. The State Public Health Laboratory, located in Northern Nevada, and the Southern Nevada Health District Public Laboratory, located in Las Vegas. Yesterday, I had a call with United States Senators Catherine Cortez Masto and Jackie Rosen, who have been fighting tirelessly on our behalf in Washington, D.C., along with the rest of our federal delegation. They immediately got in touch with HHS and later confirmed that commercial labs, including Quest and LabCorp, have been provisionally approved to begin testing in Nevada in the near future. Additionally, I spoke with one of the lead staff members on Vice President Pence's COVID-19 task force and made it incredibly clear that I agree with Nevada's residents in their desire to expand testing, and Nevada could only reach that goal with the cooperation and resources from the CDC. A few hours after that call, my office was on the line with the Deputy Director and Ranking Staff for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. On that call, we received a strong commitment to the people of Nevada that our two public labs will be receiving additional testing resources to expand our testability to test thousands of more people as needed based upon expertise and assessment of our public health officials. 
I want to thank our two public labs, local health authorities, for working closely with the Nevada Department of Health and Human Services on this request to the CDC. This is great news for our state. To summarize, Nevadans worked together. When we discovered we had two presumptive cases of COVID-19 this week, we didn't overreact. We didn't underreact. We reacted. We took swift action and we worked together. In the past week, there were road bumps and challenges, but every Nevada should join me in being proud of our local and state health authorities and the collaboration and communication exhibited between our local, state, and federal leaders. We learned lessons, we improved, we identified needs, and we made the calls. I can tell you this, the CDC is listening. This is what Nevada does. We roll up our sleeves, we put titles aside, and we get to work to keep our people safe. We've been tested before, and we came out more resilient than ever. I know that we're ready to face some challenges ahead, but I'm confident that our battle-born spirit can get us through anything. No one agency, elected official, office, hospital, or lab can fix this alone. It takes all of us, and that's what you're seeing here in Nevada. Our community is coming together, and I've heard from all corners of our state how people are stepping up. Health professionals, insurance companies, hospitals, organizations, and more who are ready to work together for all Nevada. Most importantly, I want to thank our frontline healthcare workers and medical professionals. This week serves as a reminder of their dedication to caring for the people of Nevada. Our state is better and safer because all of you, and we can't thank them enough. Over the coming days and weeks, our office will continue to collaborate and support a coordinated response with all levels of government to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. This will include doing our best to answer the questions that you may have. You'll hear from folks like our Superintendent of Schools, Director of Public Safety, State Insurance Commissioner, and State Epidemiologist, all who will provide insight on how they are working together to prevent and prepare, not panic. Finally, the best way to protect yourself and your family and prevent infection is to take similar precautions as you would to avoid the flu, including washing your hands, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, and clean and disinfect frequently. For a full list of frequently asked questions and tips, please visit your local health authorities website, the CDC, and the Nevada State Division of Public and Behavioral Health. I'm your governor but I'm also a dad, a husband, and a son. Let, me look out, let us look out for each other and for our loved ones. I encourage all Nevadans to prepare, not panic, and to continue to choose to collaborate over chaos. I will work with our health authorities to continue to provide accurate information on this situation as it is confirmed. The information I share today is the most up-to-date that we currently have. Thank you all for being here. When more information develops, our public health authorities and experts will continue to keep Nevada updated. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Governor, Thank you everybody for coming. As the governor said, we'll continue to keep you updated as new information becomes available. Uh, I'll be sending out a press release that includes a, a copy of his prepared marks as well as a, uh, a copy of the uh, press briefing that we had here today.